Oscar Romeo 4 India Sierra Sierra, this is Claudio operating India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta Telebridge Ground Station calling for an Aris contact. Uh, do you copy, team over? Okay, okay, uh, team uh, Oscar Romeo 4 India Sierra Sierra IK1 SLD. Good evening, team. Waiting to have uh, your signal loud and clear. Today we are, we are acting uh, uh, from, as a telebridge station for National Soaring Museum in Elmira, New York. I tell you, I tell you when I will have you in video. Okay, uh, team, are you ready for the first question? Over. Ready for the first question, over. Okay, go ahead, Aiden. The lady became an astronaut, over. Hi, Aiden. You know, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a pilot, and I was very lucky that I was able to, to do that, and I flew for 18 years as a helicopter pilot, and it was only later in life that I realized that I could become an astronaut as a test pilot, and so uh, for me, it was a passion for flying that was the first part of my career, and then I wanted to be an astronaut because I wanted to carry on exploring the universe, exploring the solar system. Over. Have there been any injuries on board? Over. You know, thankfully, we haven't had any major injuries on board. Um, you know, a few cuts and bruises occasionally. Uh, we do work with big pieces of equipment up here, and sometimes some sharp objects. But we've got a very good first aid cabinet. We're all trained uh, to quite a good level of first aid. And of course, we've got doctors on the ground who can help us. Over. What's a day in space like? Over. A day in space is really exciting. Uh, no two days are the same. We're always very busy. We do lots of science. We also have to maintain the space station to keep it working properly. We have to fix things occasionally. But we do get to look out the window and take photographs and see the beautiful planet as well. Over. Hi, this is Alex. And how do you stay stationary on spacewalks if the ISS is moving? Over. Hi, Alex. That's a good question. You know, on spacewalks, if you want to stay stationary, you have to hold on to something or you have to actually use some tools or carabiners, like when you're climbing, rock climbing, and clamp yourself to the space station to stop you moving, uh, because everything moves in space. Over. Hi, this is Ashwin. How far can you be from Earth and still talk to mission control? Over. Hi, Ashwin. You know, we're only ever about 400 kilometers from Earth. That's how high up above the Earth we are. Um, and we've got satellites that are even further than that, even higher up. And so we use those satellites to talk to Mission Control. And we can talk to Mission Control no. nearly all the time. We have a few minutes every day where we can't, but most of the time we can. Over. Hi, this is Michael. Have you ever been on a mission that's gone badly? Over. Hi, Michael. Well, you know, as a pilot for 18 years, I had a few missions that didn't go to plan. Thankfully, they, uh, they all ended okay, and uh, we didn't have uh, any crashes. But yes, I've been on a few missions where we've had things go wrong with helicopters. Over. This is Ella, and how does microgravity feel? Over. Hi, Ella. Microgravity feels wonderful. You could just have so much fun. Uh, you could do somersaults, you could work uh, standing upside down, and of course, it's fun when you're eating and drinking as well. Everything floats in front of you. Over. Hi, this is Evan. How fast does the ISS go and can you feel it moving? Over. Hi, Evan. We go at uh, 25 times the speed of sound. Now, that's about 10 times faster than a bullet travels, so we're going really, really fast. Um, you can't feel it moving because we're just floating inside it, but when you look out the window and you see planet Earth, you do realize that you're going very quickly. Over. This is Alana. And has there been any unearthly sightings? Over. Hi, Alana. I love that question. Um, you know, every time we see the aurora, the northern lights or the southern lights, and it's a magical green mist, it looks very unearthly. Over. Team, we have you on video. Hi, this is Kieran. Kieran, what are you studying 
Over. Hi, Kieran. We're studying lots of different things um, from metal alloys to how plants grow in space and, of course, our own human body. We're studying our bones, our immune system, and how healthy we are so that we can make people more healthy back on Earth. Over. Hi, this is Aiden. Were you scared when you went into space? Over. Hi Aiden, I was really, really excited when I went into space. It was the most exciting thing I've ever done, I think, riding a rocket into space. Um, and all the training really prepares you well for it, so no, I, I wasn't afraid at all. How do you talk to your family? Over. You know, we're very lucky we can talk to our family um, using uh, a computer here, and we can ring them up pretty much any time of the day. Uh, and once a week we get a video conference with our families as well. So we do have good contact with friends and family. Over. Hi, this is Ashley. What courses in school do you have to take to be an astronaut? Over. Hi, Ashley. Well, that's an important question. I think if you take science and math, then that will be really good for becoming an astronaut. Over. Hi, this is Alex again, and what does it feel like to enter and exit the atmosphere? Over. Hi, Alex. You know, when you enter the atmosphere, it's uh, quite a smooth ride in that Soyuz rocket, but there's lots of acceleration, so you're firmly pressed back into your seat, and you can really feel the G-forces, but uh, it's very exciting. And then when the G-forces stop and the engine cuts out, everything just floats, and that's when you first realize you're in space. Over. Hi, this is Ashwin again. Are spacewalks difficult? Over. Hi, Ashwin. Spacewalks are hard work. Yes, and they are difficult. We have to train a long time for them, and we do that in a huge swimming pool at Houston, in Houston at Johnson Space Center. Uh, but they're very, very uh, rewarding. They're very hard work, but they're great fun to do. Over. Hi, this is Michael. Is microgravity difficult to deal with? Over. Hi, Michael. Microgravity was uh, hard work at first, yes, because if you're not careful, you'll lose things. Everything floats away, so you have to make sure you're careful where you put things down. But once you get used to it, it's great fun. Over. This is Ella, and do you bring something with you to remind you of home? Over. Hi, Ella. Yes, we did bring some small things, some pictures of our friends and family. Uh, and also some things that we might like to take back for our family as presents. So uh, it was a very small container that we were allowed to bring for personal things. Over. Hi, this is Evan again. How long does it take to become an astronaut? Over. Hi, Evan. We train for about uh, six years before you fly. Uh, you, you, you can't really go on a mission without training for at least three years. So it does take a long time to become an astronaut. Over. This is Alana, and how do you control the ro the rocket that takes you to the space station? Over. Hi, Alana. Well, you know, once the rocket is lit, uh, you know, there's not much control over it, really. You just ride it all the way into space. But if things do go wrong, then we do have emergency systems on the rocket where we can effectively just separate and parachute back down to Earth safely. Over. Hi, this is Kieran again. What's the most rewarding thing about being an astronaut? Over. Well, Kieran, that's a good question, and there are many, many things that are very rewarding about being an astronaut. Like talking to you guys down there in New York, it's really great fun for us to be able to talk to you. Uh, we're the ones who get to enjoy space, we get to take wonderful photographs, we get to enjoy microgravity. Um, and I love the fact that we're also doing things up here that will help people back on Earth. Over. All right, those were our questions. Well, it's wonderful to talk to everybody in New York. I hope you have a great day. Uh, and thank you for joining me on board the space. Over. Over. All right, we're going to give you the best 73 you heard this side of the Milky Way Galaxy. Over. Okay, team, thank you for the MTV uh, transmission. Very good signal. Ciao, ciao from Italy. Ciao, ciao. Thank you very much for the bridge.
Right from the bridge. 